friends, Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Thank you for watching part one of this two-part series. It was a very challenging repair, and I think you're going to enjoy part two very much. If you haven't seen part one, be sure to check that out before you watch this one. I think that'll make a big difference to you. I uh, just wanted to put this little front end on this video to tell you a couple things. Number one, thanks to all my patrons for all their support on Patreon. I really do appreciate that. If you're thinking about becoming a Patreon uh, supporter, I would appreciate it very much. So thank you uh, kindly. I think if you saw my video on video production, you know that it takes a lot of work to put these videos out. I'm not complaining and I'm not begging for you know, you to spend your money. If you've got the money and you don't mind uh, supporting it, then that's a great thing and I appreciate it. But uh, if you're hurting for money, don't worry. I understand. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention was there's been a lot of comments about where's the next part of the guitar build and I apologize for that. I, I normally keep things going as fast as I can, but I hit a couple of roadblock snags on the guitar and I'm I'm actually building some tools to get around those snags and so I'm waiting on some parts to be to be delivered and things like that so I, ha I have made progress on the guitar but I haven't made enough progress to really put out a video. I will try to uh, get another uh, guitar video out though hopefully within 10 days or so. Um, I apologize because it, it's just taken forever, but you know, sometimes you just got to do what you got to do. I hope you enjoy this part two of this neck repair. Spoiler alert, it really did turn out awesome. It's almost been a full hour since I glued up the uh, neck parts there on the mandolin. I'm going to uh, use the last little bit of that hour to clean this up, and I want to get this back on the mandolin yet this evening or this afternoon and then by tomorrow then we'll be shaping it and staining it and finishing it so we can get this thing in and out of here. There's some binding coming loose right on the edges here and I'm going to try to get those glued back in. The first problem I have with this channel is that they've got epoxy or something up in here where they had the end glued down. I just sharpened this quarter inch chisel using my hollow grind sharpening method and I'll tell you what video number that is right there. So watch right there on the screen and you'll see if you want to go see how I sharpen my chisels. But this thing is really razor sharp now. It will shave. And I'm hoping I can just get under this epoxy and peel it out of here. I am able to carve it off the walls here with this sharp chisel. It's just peeling right off the walls. So I'm going to peel it off the walls first and then maybe I can peel it off the floor of the channel. I don't leave any airspace like this. In my opinion, you're asking for trouble. It just, you can pull up there and, and you know, if you have that full, then there's a, a ton of, you know, you could put a ton of pressure on this and it's not going to go back. But with it open like that, this neck tension pulling up, it can just weaken the joint. I'm not saying it's going to weaken. I'm not saying it will ever weaken. I'm just saying it can. I have seen it do it. There's no question about that. I'm not saying this one's going to do it. But because of that, I typically fill this. And so I'm probably going to fill this with, while we've got this off of here, I'm probably going to make a wedge that'll go down in there and tighten this up real good and tight. If you ever want it out of there, drill it out of there. You know, it's not like it's a big deal. You know, if you need to take it apart, you can still take it apart. Okay, to determine how big of a, th how thick of a wedge I need, it's not that tough really, you just, you put a regular wedge in there, and of course this is thin, and now I can measure the thickness of it right there, and I'll know exactly how thick of a wedge I need to go down in there, or thick of a piece of wood to go down in there, it's really not a wedge. Okay, it's 200 thousandths on the money, so let's go make a 200 thousandths piece of wood and stick it in here. Okay, I've made myself a little, piece of wood that'll fit in there fairly good. It's a little narrow, but that won't hurt nothing. I, you know, it's just that I'm, I'm just trying to make this joint, you know, airtight so that it doesn't uh, flex this direction at all. You know, it probably wouldn't anyway, but uh, you know, 
just safe than sorry. We got it apart. Why not? Tap it down into place. It's just a little bit narrow, so there's a little bit of airspace on each edge. I, again, that's probably a good thing, so that if you ever want to take it apart for whatever reason, you could take it apart. Just you could just you know drill this out or whatever, however you want to get it out with a Dremel tool or whatever. There you go. And it didn't go quite flush. But it drove down flush. There you go. You can't even feel it now. This area right here is just too wide. It's not perfectly squared off. It was cut by hand with a Dremel tool or something. So I'm going to square it off first. Put a patch of wood in this squared off area right here and patch this back together. Then we'll cut a narrower trench if we decide to go with a trench. We'll cut a narrower trench into the truss rod area. Again, I haven't made up any decisions. I uh, tend to uh, make the decisions right when I need to make them, not too much before. I want to be able to put this in really tight and snug because it's going to add more strength to this area. Not a ton of strength if we cut a truss rod back in it, but, but some. This area is just a lot bigger than this area. I think you can see that on the video that this is much bigger than this. So that's what I'm filling. That's pretty good. It's a little wider on this outer end than it is back there, but we can make our patch fit that, I think. I'm just throwing this little wedge in here just as it give me some ballpark ideas of what I can do. It's not too bad. I would have to cut some off of this. So I think I'll go, I think I'll take a little bit off of this so that it fits that angle pretty good. And then I can draw it on here and I'll know exactly how big of a patch I need. All right, I've got this fit nip in here real good. And what I did was I just laid it in there good and flat. And then I drew a pencil marker crust here so I'd know how far off to cut it. So that's the profile of the patch right there. And I just need to make it wider. I'm not sure just how wide because it's quite a bit wider up here. To show you how wide it is, 435 thousandths wide at that end. We could write that on here. 435 at this end. And then it's quite a bit narrower, I think, at this end. 380 thousandths at that end. I'm going to go ahead and make me a wedge like this and I'll be right back. Well we just made this wedge and it fits it just about like a glove. I've only got a little bit of snug pressure on that clamp, just light pressure and I'm going to tap this in with this to make sure it's down as far against that end as it'll go. And I'm pretty sure we fixed that whole area solid there now where it ain't going nowhere. You know, it may have been weak before, but it's not weak now, and I can pretty much guarantee you that. I'd bet money that this neck joint is stronger than it was with that truss rod in there. Clean out down in here, there's a lot of glue squeeze out down in the crack. Probably just going to let this set overnight now, which won't hurt nothing because everything needs to get good and hard anyway.
have been through. I've put my tooth blade in my finger plane so that I can cut across grain and different things. And uh, getting down to the detail here, and I think this helped me get it faster than, than anything else. This world of woe, there is no sadness, no toil, no danger, and that bright land to which I go, I'm going see my mother she said she'd meet me when I come home I'm just going over Jordan I'm just going it's almost there it's not you can still feel it obviously but it's not terrible right now It's really actually starting to blend into it. You can hardly feel it now, the blend. It's getting there. It, it needs more work, don't get me wrong, but, we, but we're getting close. When over home. Well, as you can see, there's a little bit of run out here. It just... It's not terrible, but it's, you know, back to here, it's a sixteenth of an inch or something. And, you know, I didn't want that to happen, but it did. So, there you go. That's not too bad. That's, that's actually, right there, you can't even hardly feel that either. It's, really, you just can't even hardly feel it. It's, it's you can see it, obviously, but uh, it's pretty good. Now you can't feel it. You can not feel it. But I sanded into the finish a little bit there, but that'll have to blend in later. I think that'll work. Okay, so that part I'm pretty happy with. This here, not so much. I'm tempted to run this through my thickness sander, not touching this and letting it hit this, because uh, that's the way I normally do it. But just, just barely not touching this. I may regret this, but I'm going to stick this in here up to this part here and sand just this part here. Um, that's how I normally do it. We'll see what happens. Well, it made a little mark or two on this, but I can buff that out, I believe. I don't think that'll be a problem. It looks terrible right there, but it's not. I don't think it's an issue. And I just got to clean up a little bit right in here, and that worked real nice on that. And I think we can blend that right into it. You'll hardly even be able to tell it. right there man you can't even feel it of course now keep in mind I'm gonna to have to uh, take this finish off and that's gonna change it again but because uh, it's down to the finish now and the finish is fairly thick I do probably need to put one in here I think what I'm gonna do is cut my truss lot truss rod hole here first I'm gonna leave a little meat in between here come down with the hole so that there'll be a big square area here that's going to be solid. I'm not worried about this breaking to be honest. This this is way solid wood here. But I, I'm going to try to keep this as small as possible too. And I think I'm going to make a custom truss rod to anchor back in right in here somewhere. I'm going to just draw in what I want to do here. I think I'm going to come across about right here. And there's a lot of meat in that area, so I'm going to keep this as small as possible, but yet make it real nice. If 
functional. I'm going there to see. 365 thousandths, 730 thousandths roughly, so we still got quite a long ways before we're in danger of anything. My mother, she said she'd meet me. And in case you're wondering, there's seriously five times more wood here than there was in their version at least five times more version wood and i'm not kidding when i come i'm just going over jordan 411 so that's pretty consistent so 396 there so 395 on that side so it might be a little deeper on this side for some reason not 395 i it, you know these things change a little bit it doesn't take much i'm going to call that good now i'm going to just double check that this is fairly flat up here and i hate to change it because it kind of the little bit of lip that's there it uh fits the fretboard and i don't want to get rid of that so i'm just going to let the router right on top of that lip and just it will be what it is. I'm going to try to do this in two passes, but I bet I end up having to do more. I'm going to have to get my uh, air compressor hooked up to it to blow all the dust away. I'm just going over home. I'm going to try to get this to drill up through there. It's going to be tough. Lengthening it about as long as I can get it. Slow the speed down a little bit. Now I'm trying to figure out what do I do now. <laughs> it's like this is down. I, I would like to have that down a little lower, but I'm almost afraid to take it down much lower. Took the truss rod cover that was there and marked where the ho bottom hole would be. And I can come down some more where I can get a better angle on this, which would be a good thing. So that's what we're going to do next. I think we've got it where we can get a rod through there now, no problem. Next thing is to make the rod the one that we can anchor back here. I think we're in pretty good shape. I really do. I, don't, I think we're way solider than we were before. Now we just need a little 1032 nut to put on there. I couldn't find a square nut that would be anything close to a 1032, so I just cut off a little square piece of steel here, drilled a hole in it, and now I'm taking a 1032 tap and going through it. It's uh, really a very simple process to just make it nut. And that's this will actually be better anyway because it's a little bigger square and it'll give me a little better anchor point. And that's all there is to it. So now, with any luck, the nut will thread on the shaft. Here's the shaft I made, it threaded a little while ago. And put that on there and it threads right on perfectly. So now I'm going to braze that on there because I don't want it to move. I've got the torch here. Yes, I know I should have a brazing tip on there, but you know, for this little project, this will work just fine. I just have it turned down and it'll braze just perfectly fine. Brazing is way stronger than solder. And that's what the finished product looks like. It's just a square uh, nut, if you will, that I can put down in a slot in the mandolin, and this will that way you can't pull it out. And the threading keeps you from pulling it out, but then the solder or the uh, brazing keeps it from spinning or pulling out both. So it's just double insurance. I've got a mark on here how far down I need the threads. This will be for the nut end, the tightening end of the truss rod. And I'll just take the threads down about that far and we should be good. Backing it up cuts off the thread. If you don't back up and cut it off, a lot of times your thread will tear. So 
I just go like about a, a third of a turn and then I back up and cut the thread off and it just works a lot better, makes a much cleaner thread for me. And now I have a long nut here. I'm not going to use it in this form. I am going to use it, but I'm going to cut it off and then taper the end of it so that it'll look like a standard truss rod nut. We're going to cut about a 15 degree taper on the end of this nut. Well, that's getting the job done. It's not in there very straight, unfortunately. It's just not cutting a very straight taper on there. Try chucking it up again and see if we get a little better. I'll have to reach in a little further and maybe get it chucked up a little better. Try that one more time and see if we do any better. Yeah, that looks better now. It's straightened it out a little bit. Just wasn't chucked up perfectly square, I guess. I think I'm actually going to change the angle and go a little bit steeper angle. Yeah, that looks better, I think. We'll call that good. Just take a file and very lightly touch it there. Once again, you have to be very careful working this close to a spinning object with a file. I think that's good enough for our purposes. Now we'll have to saw this nut off. I made a rod, put some threads on the end, screwed this square nut on the end, and then I brazed it just to make sure it would never come loose. Now, I left just a teeny bit of the nub sticking out back here. I'm going to mark off where this nut is, and then I'm going to cut out a tiny little slot in there with my Dremel tool so that it'll go in there. At least that's the plan. Got a real tiny cutter on that so that uh, we can not hog out too much material. At least that's the plan. I doubt that's a big enough area yet, but try to see if it'll go down in there at all. I would like to make it fit fairly tight, if possible. I think if I persuade it, it'll go down in there. And that's kind of the way I want it to fit. I don't want it to fit loose. I'm going to put an underbend in this. That'll shorten it a little bit, but not that much, I don't think. I'm laying the rod here so I can mark off the length of what I want and where I want to cut it off. I think I'll just cut her off right there should be plenty long well i did a couple of things i i put a slight straight back to this uh you can see maybe you can see that it's kind of there's an underbow between here and here, and then I kind of straightened it back to this also. That's so that the nut will fit in this slot a little bit better, and so that this back here will fit into this slot a little bit better. In the right place it goes. Now I think I'm about there. It's just that. I don't think that's going to go down deep enough, so I may have to grind the top of that off. Just checking to see the fit here to see that everything is going to work. It looks like it's going to, but it's not perfect. Uh, so I'm afraid of this is going to be a little bit high to this. Uh, darn it. So I'm going to have to find a way to get it down in there a little deeper. Doggone it. Not much, just a little. That's why it's good to fit all this stuff up ahead of time and test it and test it and test it because you just never know.
Been doing quite a bit more work with this off camera to get it to fit a little bit better. Uh, mostly just the, with the bottom of the channel there and uh, I ground off a little bit more of the top of this metal so it would go down. Um, I think I'm in pretty good shape. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a strip of wood that's going to fit over the top of this and be glued in here so that this will be inside of a channel and so it'll be lifting on a piece of wood when it lifts. I've cut a strip of wood that's just about the right width to go down in this slot. Now I'm going to profile this under curve on this uh, stick and not that easy to do with one hand and nothing's easy if you just had three hands you always need three hands to work on an instrument if you don't have three hands you probably shouldn't work on an instrument all right well there's my under bow and i'm gonna get you know take that to that line we we'll put this in here and we'll glue this on top of it and then that way whenever it's whenever that rod is straightening out it'll be lifting right there in the center so you can see how the fit's going to be in there it's going to be snug now you don't really need to do this last little step here, but I'm going to do it just because it'll even make it that much better. So we're going to go right down the middle of this with this little ball. Just to, All that's going to do is just let this piece drop in there a little bit more and give it a little more surface to glue to. Okay, like I said, you don't really need to do that. I'm just doing it to uh, have just let this piece go down in the trench just a hair further. It's not going to go that much further even, but it'll help. Okay, we're going to let that set up for about uh, 30, 40 minutes, something like that, and then we'll start working on the rest of it. I'm going to try to route a binding slot in here to match up this binding, and then we're going to dye this black. But I've got it set, and I think I'm close. I've tested it, and I think we're where we need to be. So here we go. We're just going to make it butt in match up right here. Uh, it's just way too much trouble, and too much time is the more important thing because this thing is on a budget and we can't go, you know, we can't make every single detail perfect. It just, we just don't have that kind of time. But we are trying to make it as good as we can make it in the amount of effort we've got here. I'm stopping it right here where I'm going to make the saddle come out and that way it'll just look like a natural stopping point. I have to heat these pieces up a little bit to get them to conform to my space. Okay, so in order to melt the two ends of these pieces of plastic together, I'm using this Beacon 527 that I get from Walmart. And I'm just using a little dab on there, and I'm putting a little dab on the end of the other piece to help start to soften it. Then I'm going to take this new glue that I'm using now, which some, one of my wonderful viewers recommended, which is Formula 560 for... It's called canopy, canopy glue. It's awesome stuff. All right, so we've got those held in place. And while that's held in place, I'm going to go ahead and cut this one, start cutting it so I can match up the next piece. This, because of this peg head being at an angle, I want this cut to come straight perpendicular down. So I've got to get that angle just right and I'll use a file to help me get it that way 
And now I've got to cut the right angle to match up to this other piece. And so to do that, I have to cut across there and I sneak up on it. I always cut it plenty long. Just start looking at it to see if it looks like it's going to match. I was playing with this bevel here and I've got it matching up pretty good on this corner. It's easier to cut this end off kind of perpendicular square than it is to mess with this angle. So I've got this angle working pretty good. So I think I'm just going to take it off of the other end now. Once again, I'm going to use the beacon right where the two plastic parts meet together and the rest of it will be with the other glue. I think when we're done, you're not going to hardly be able to tell this. It's, I know it looks bad now, but that's the way it usually goes with this kind of thing. You just have to make it look worse before it looks better. Alright, I think we got her there. I think we whipped that problem. So there's what she looks like up close. You can see we've put the binding all the way up through here, down, and it matches up to the ends of these pieces here and here. And once they're scraped smooth and cleaned up and everything's stained, I don't think you'll even hardly notice it. Customer wants a full setup on this mandolin. This has the larger frets in it. I asked him about if he wanted me to change those, and he says he prefers those, so we're going to leave the larger frets in there. But we are going to scallop down the tang here. There comes that time where we can put the fretboard back on it. Just cleaning up a spot or two of uh, something. Not sure what it is. The uh, Got 90% of the glue off of here. The problem with this one is, you know, because I had to cut the binding along here and stuff, I don't really want to scrape the outer edges because that will make the binding go back together better if I leave it like it is. So I'm just cleaning it up the best I can. We're going to glue it back on with tight bond, which I believe is what it was glued on with to begin with. Well, there you have it. We've got her all clamped back in place. Feels like it lined up real good. We just got back from our Mountain View trip, so it's been several days since I've worked on the mandolin. It feels fine. The, uh, there's a little bit of a, a ridge right here along this edge. Apparently, there, you know, it may have slipped just a tiny amount, but uh, we can, I think we can get rid of that there. Um, I don't think it's enough to hurt anything. Everything looks pretty good otherwise. But uh, a little disappointed in that I can feel that. I was hoping that it would be smooth. It feels fairly smooth on the other side for whatever reason. We're going to have to work on detailing this now. This uh, new trim is sitting up proud of the surface, so we need to level that out. We need to uh, shave the trim off, uh, the binding off to the edges also and uh, just do some general cleanup and then get ready to stain it and varnish it.
it's possible we'll take this finish off yet. I really still don't know yet. I'm going to see what we can do. We can always take the finish off if, it, if we can't get it to blend and look halfway decent. Okay, I guess before I go any further, I ought to re-drill these holes before I do the staining and varnishing, because who knows, I might get chip out or something. But anyway, so I guess that's what I'll do next. Find me a drill bit that matches this, and we'll re-drill these holes through the top here. We're at the drill press, going to drill these two holes. I've got a piece of wood below this to uh, minimize tear out. At least I hope that's the way it's going to work. There you go, perfect holes. And they should be perfect with the rest of them because they were the ones that were there before. I just went right straight through them. So we should be good. Well, we're now on to my very favorite part. And if you believe that, well then I've got some ground I want to sell you down there in the Florida Everglades, right in the middle of the Okeechobee Swamp. No, I absolutely despise staining and varnishing and all that stuff. And the reason is because I know I'm not any good at it. And, uh, you know, I'm colorblind. So, you know, if you just ask the, the, the joke question, how much fun is it for a colorblind guy to stain and varnish instruments? The answer is not very much. <laughs> it, so, all right. So I'm starting with bright yellow. Yes, I know that doesn't match. I know that. But anyway, I'm using it to uh, for a base and uh, to bring out the highlights and the uh, also this curl that's in the wood, which just happens to kind of sort of line up with the curl that's in the other wood. So it's not terrible. And then, you know, I'm, I'm blending that yellow back into the other part, too, to help it blend and see what happens. As Mr. Pete on his channel says, it's by guess and by gosh. And uh, that's pretty much what I do here. It's just you work at it until you get something you're happy with. And if you're not happy with it, well, then you just become happy with it because that's what you got. That didn't work for me, but that's okay. I, you know, I, I'm not done yet. We'll, uh, we can address it some more. There's all kinds of things you can do with these leather dyes. I'm going back over this with the yellow again. That will get rid of some of the brown and bring out the highlights back, bring some of the highlights back. And as you can see, it's done that compared to this darker area up here, at least. But, you know, I don't expect a miracle here, you know. And if you are, then you probably should turn it off right now because you're not going to get one of those. Unfortunately, it's lightened up here around the, the tear out or the break here where we fixed it. So, you know, I'm not happy with that. I wish I, I wish that wasn't there. I'd be happy with the rest of it, I think, right now, except for that part. So I'm going to see if I can darken that part up by itself. I doubt it. I doubt it's going to happen. I'm just, I'm putting the dark brown over all this. A lot of this is going to be black, but you can go to black. You can go darker much easier than you can go lighter, obviously, with these dyes. So I'm not too worried about going darker. Uh, I'm going to take this tape off of here. This has only been sitting for about 15 minutes, but I think it'll be fine. That kind of glue sets up pretty fast. Okay, I got some denatured alcohol on this rag, and I'm just going to knock off some of the darkness to this piece. Although, you know, it just as luck would have it, there's just a piece of like ingrain here because of the curl that just sucked up the dark and it's just not going to get light. I mean, you can do all you want to to it and it's just not going to get light. So it's just the way it is. Nature decided that that's the way they wanted it to look and so there's the way it's going to look.
Yeah, you can see again, it just the stain just completely migrated away from the part that I put it on. Just not even there. It's just so annoying when you, you just can't get the simplest things to cooperate with you on staining, varnishing. It just won't cooperate. I guess I'm just going to have to take the stain off this part of the neck and make it all bare woods so I can at least get a decent blend. It's just not working. All right, I was wanting to avoid this, but it just can't be avoided. I'm just gonna take it down to bare wood. It's, it's driving me crazy. That'll also make the fretboard blend better. It chipped out a lot anyway. It'll just be better. With the exception of this collar right here of whatever that stuff is, I think it'll stain fine now and I think I can blend it just be no problem at all. Of course, I've said things like that before and they've been my famous last words and that may be the case here, I don't know. But I don't see why it would be a problem now. It should be pretty easy to stain and varnish now. Probably should have just done that to begin with, but I was hoping it would just work the way it was. And it just did not want to cooperate. Much better. So I'm real happy with that. I think we're done already at, at that point now. I think we're done because that's just real pretty. So the only problem is this area right here, this stripe, and that stripe can be airbrushed with black, and that's probably what we'll have to do. Other than that, I think we're done. Just gotta clean the binding back off, tape it off, and then let's start putting lacquer on it. This uh, binding obviously is lighter colored than this binding. It's just kind of a T difference or something, and so I've got some very light stuff here that I'm just gonna go over it with. Um, you know, it's not going to probably be perfect either, but it'll, I think it'll knock it down and, and I think it'll get close. You know, that helps, I think that helps a little bit. It's not exactly the same color. And I don't know if it's going to do much good to do that yet because I'm going to do some airbrushing and the airbrushing is probably going to get on there and I'll probably have to scrape it back off and then I'll probably have to put that little stain back on there again. But uh, I'm going to do airbrushing around here and around this area, this area, just to blend, help that blend better. And, you know, this area and maybe even, maybe even this area, although I'm not so sure about this because of the inlay. I've got some nitrocellulose lacquer. I, I, oh, I would say a little more than a third of the way up, almost halfway up. Then I put in some uh, lacquer thinner. Then I put in some retarder because it always turns white on me. I don't know about everybody else. And now I'm going to put in some drops of black leather dye, which is an alcohol-based dye, but it does seem to mix okay with this stuff once you spend a little time mixing it. It doesn't mix instantly, but I'm going to put quite a bit in there. At first glance, it doesn't look like it mixes. It just kind of sits there. But after you stir it up a little bit and work with it a little bit, it seems to work okay. All right, we'll stir this up just a little bit and it seems to be stirring up okay and mixing up okay. The thing about lacquer thinner is it just about cuts anything. That's why that leather dye works pretty good on this. This in effect becomes kind of like a paint. It's not exactly paint. It's kind of translucent, but if you put a few applications on it, it becomes pretty opaque. You can't really see through it good. And that's what, that's the only thing I can think of that's going to work right here. Because that's going to, otherwise that's just going to look white across there when everything else is dark. <clears throat> Airbrushing is not that hard to do, 
but I definitely don't claim to be any good at it. I just do what I do. Well, as you can see, we're out here in my beautiful spray booth. Since I don't have one of those, we just go outside. I've got my lacquer here mixed up in my little airbrush, and I'm going to sp spritz it across. It's coming out pretty hard, I will say. Might have the pressure a little high. But you can already see that's working pretty good to blend that. I like the way that looks already. I think I might have a little too much pressure, so I think I'm going to lighten the pressure just a little bit. Let's see if we can put a little more on there. May have to let that set and dry a little while because I'm going to need quite a few more coats there to blend that light spot in, I can tell. And it's just going to run if I put any more on it. But it's starting to look real nice. I think it's going to work really good. But we're going to have to give that some time to dry. Well, so far, based on what I'm seeing here, now this isn't 100% dry yet, but based on what I'm seeing, that's not going to take the lacquer black either. So it's just repelling anything and everything, all color. It's just not easy being me sometimes. You know what I think I'm going to try? I think I'm going to just try a black magic marker. One of those marks all or whatever you call it that marks on everything. And I think I'm just going to try that and see if that will stick to it. Because so far nothing else is sticking to it at all. What a shame. Otherwise it's starting to look really good. You know, I almost defy you now to see where it's broke. You know, you can see it, obviously, but it's not obvious. <laughs> you know, when you're looking for it, you can see it. But if you're not looking for it, I don't think you'll even know this thing was ever broke. Probably up here yet you will, but there's not much I can do about that. I'll just blend it the best I can and buff it the best I can. But I think that even that I think is going to diminish a lot once we get the finish on there. I've got a brand new one of these pins. It's never even been used. I thought maybe that would be the best chance for getting it dark. Well, I'll be darn. You learn something new every day. Well, the black magic marker seems to have done the trick on darkening that up. Now, I'm just going to hit it with this stuff and uh, see if we can't make it all blend together. I think we're good now. I'm going to go ahead and spray this top here a little bit, even though probably going to cause more problems than it's worth but I'm going to go ahead and let all that dry now let all that dry now I don't know how well you're seeing this because this monitor sure doesn't show up anything right but that makes that look better already too and uh, that's definitely blending all those colors together it's really starting to look good now I just, it, you, I, honestly, it, if it turns out as good as it's starting to look here, it, you won't be able to tell it was ever broke, period. Well, as you can see, I used a little more aggressive sandpaper right in here because there is kind of a hump going up to that old finish. Um, it helped smooth it out some, but then of course it took off that spot that doesn't want to stain. It took that finish off of there, unfortunately. And now, the marks all doesn't even seem to want to mark on it. That 
was the brand new marker. Let's try an older one. This is an older one. It seems to be marking on it okay. Blends right in. You can't really even see it. So, at least it's a little smoother there now with this heavier sandpaper. I'm going to use this aggressive sandpaper right here on this seam because it's a little bit edgy too, but not bad. It's just a little bit. You can still see it. And I'm going to mostly use the aggressive sandpaper on the old part because that's the high part. Just looking for a blend right here at this seam line. I'm trying to get this seam line right across there to blend a little bit better. It's pretty close, but it just could be a little better. I think that'll be fine. Doubt you'll ever see it. Okay, well, looks like we're going to have to put some more finish on here and got a little bit of a spot right there for some reason I think that's just in the finish I don't think the wood was rough I've already got a lot of time invested in this that I know I'm not getting paid for but you know sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do and this is pretty good here this is blending pretty well on the top could be just a little bit better but not bad it's pretty good I'm going to use the blow dryer on this my heat gun but set it down to like a blow dryer level and just dry it off a little bit and we'll put our last hopefully last couple of coats of lacquer on this today and we should be able to string her back up Well, that's about as good as it's going to get right there um, you know you can see this little line right here a little bit but you know that's just gonna be the way it is because I can't afford to spend any more money on this thing more time on it um, I have a very tight budget on this you won't even believe how tight to, to do all this work and uh, you know for the most part I'm on my own time so you know I can only do what I can do and even that doesn't look bad because it's a straight line across there and some people would think that's just the way it was made and the way it came from the factory. You can The worst thing that you can see is that this binding obviously doesn't quite match that binding but it's not horrible. You know, It would have been way too much work to take off all this other binding and replace it uh, on this tight budget. Heck, just doing the binding on the top <laughs> might have been eating up most of the budget. So, you know, it is what it is. It's, you know, the way I like, you know, people focus on the negatives all the time on this stuff. This thing came broken to me, completely broken. I'm not saying I'm the only person on this planet that could fix it, because I know I'm not. There's a lot of people that could fix it. But I might be the only person on the planet who would bother with it. So there you go, especially for that budget. So I thought it would make a good video. That's why I went ahead and bought into it and did it. And perhaps it, this might be the best video I've done on a neck repair. So I hope you like it. You really would have difficulty telling where it's broke if you didn't know. Obviously it was broke straight off pretty much. And you know, you can see the scarf joint that I put in here. Um, but you but it doesn't look bad you know and I used a high-grade curly maple so it it kind of blends in with what was there um, this mark you can see um, this mark across here you really have to look hard to see it but you can see the binding difference on the edges you can see it probably if you get it in the right light but it's not easy to see where it cuts it where the scarf joint cuts across here you know on the bottom side you can see it a little better I think than on the top side so it is what it is 
we're going to polish up the rest of the instrument, put her back together, and let's see if it worked. One thing that uh, changed on this is it's going to take a taller nut here. I guess I just cut the angle just a hair lower or something. I don't know what the deal is. So the peg head is probably technically that way, you know, 40 or 50 thousandths of an inch. I, I'm not sure. But anyway, so this is too low now, so we need a taller nut. Using my caliper sent by one of my wonderful viewers to get a kind of an accurate reading here, a close reading. So that says 394, so if we just go 400 thousandths, 400 thousandths tall, and the rest of the dimensions are pretty good. Well, we've got this lower completely fixed up. Uh, it, the action is incredibly good. There was a bit more underbow under here than it needed, so I tightened up the truss rod that I made, and that worked out real good. There's still a little bit more underbow than I like to see, but I think it's fine. The uh, looks of it, uh, again, here's a close-up of, you can see the scarf joint there if you look close. It turned out just amazingly good. There's the peg head, and you really can't even hardly tell it other than the binding. And the back is pretty much the same way. You can see a line there if you look real close, but it's not terribly bad. Um, overall, it's a real good mandolin. The sound on it is very good, I think. So here's what she sounds like. The customer, I believe, told me this mandolin is going to get played in church quite a bit. So that's uh, what we're going to play right here, a good church song. So I hope you enjoyed my best neck repair video ever. I don't think there's any question about that. And let me just add, if you can't thumbs up this video, or let me rephrase that, if you thumbs down this video, then please don't bother watching any of my other videos because you won't like any of them. Thanks for watching.